When the support program for refugee settlements and host communities in northern Uganda started in 2016, it was financed by the European Union Trust Fund. Thereafter, it was implemented by Enable in partnership with the government of Uganda with the aim to improve food security and livelihoods of the refugee population. This intervention transformed the lives of youths, women and girls living in refugee settlements and host communities of the West Nile region. The initiative rolled out in the six districts of Ajumani, Terego, Yumbe, Arua, Madiokolo, including Kiriandongo. Between 2016 and 2024, over 6,000 youthful graduates were equipped with various skills to access and create jobs in their communities. I was just a, a nothing person, but today I have acquired a lot. I'm owning the business, I'm saving. I also have a, a lot of uh, plot of land. I, I, I'm also feeding people home, paying school fees for my followers. I'm also, I, I have one daughter now. I'm even, I have taken her to school in Kampala. Before this work, I was just idle at the home. Now, after getting this skill, I'm now getting something to buy even a shop for myself. The acquisition of vocational skills has been a game changer among these graduates of the Skills Development Fund, many of whom were school dropouts. We are getting money because they have trained us for the knowledge of business and they train us to know how to deal in with the customers, how to welcome in with the customers. That's why we have all those skills to welcome in customers serving customers, being with the people, we all have those skills. Full man, we are paying her. And then secondly, she's also training other, other, other farmers who are coming here to learn. So from there, we are giving her allowance out of the money we got from those people. In this second phase, uh, it is still ongoing, and I believe that this time, the percentage of employment will increase. The reason why I'm saying it will increase is because we have an additional component. Unlike the first phase, in the second phase, we have introduced post-training support. That means if somebody completes training, is given startup kits, then we have like six months to follow up, to mentor, to link to financial services, to link to market. Interestingly, Female beneficiaries take up male-dominated occupations such as metal fabrication, motorbike repairs, and solar installations in local communities. When we were recruiting trainees, it was so interesting that most of the ladies went for welding, solar, and motorcycle, and fewer of them went for horticulture, which was also a, like a surprise. I know how to repair the engine, I'll often, also the tire, the wiring, I know, also this last place, I know. And I'm so, so grateful to, to have this course because I, the, the village where I am, people are really suffering, they don't have power, and that's the reason why I choose this course so that I also help them. The smile on their faces is a clear manifestation of the positive impact this project has brought to these communities. They have changed me, Annabelle have changed me. I'm also changing the life of people also. I'm great, I feel great, I feel happy. The intervention has brought development and services closer to the communities. For instance, in the first phase of the project, over 65% of 5,228 beneficiaries were able to start self-sustaining small enterprises. If one has wanted to build a house or want to construct a house, they call these people to come and construct. That's one of the impact that I've seen where it is supporting the water, the community. And we have like the ones for, 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 for catering or for solar or for motorbike repair. 
like you have already one uh, one group which has already started uh, doing their work in one of the centers. They are trying also to repair the what the motorbikes. So with Enable, we conduct what we call formal enterprise training, formal enterprise-based training. We engage enterprises in the community, okay, in the private sector, okay. We attach learners to these enterprises and the learners get hands-on skills. According to the UN Refugee Agency, over 1.5 million refugees from South Sudan and Democratic Republic of Congo crossed to Uganda. There's a strategy that was developed in 2016 by OPM and other partners, which clearly indicates which percentage should be given to refugees and which percentage should be given to the host community. So we are following the 70-30%. 70% of the target beneficiaries are refugees and the 30% uh, host community. So our selection criteria takes keen interest in those, uh, those percentages. The selection criteria to identify eligible candidates for vocational training is jointly conducted. It's done through a committee made up of the Office of the Prime Minister, district representatives, NGOs, and representatives of refugees. I have this opportunity of this People, when I bend, they teach me how to sew a shirt because at first I didn't know how to make menswear. So they teach me how to make menswear, shirt, trousers, what, what. Then now I'm ready. I thank you people to pay my school fees, to support me. Then I'm happy. My life was too hard because I didn't know even to get even 100 ceilings in a day was hard. Then this time, I can now get in a day, I can get at least a range of 20,000. In the first season, we planted a tomato in a group. We got a total of 11,567,000. That one was on a May to June there. Prior to entering the labor market, the beneficiaries undergo industrial training. This enables them to acquire relevant knowledge in business dynamics. We train both refugees and the host. While we train them together, we, we coexist because the land is given for the refugees by the nationals, so we bring them together as one body. This vocational training has a multiplier effect. The beneficiaries also train other members of their communities to be resilient and self-reliant. Here, as you see, I have two students. This is not my first time to teach them here. It is two years, so I'm advising them. After them finishing their training or course like this, they have, even though things are hard for their for their life, they have to they have to struggle. They have to take heart to to get what they want in their life. If they come to me or I show them that I do, you come and have also the same training that I'm doing. Come and see what I'm doing, and also they just catch up from where um from where I was also doing. These are all stories which are which are really captivating, which are helping us to prove that there is what we are doing is not going to waste, but is creating a smile in somebody's face, is creating an impact in the community, to the, to the primarily to the to the beneficiaries, but also in totality in a, in, a, in, in the entire community. Exhibitions in marketplaces is one of the activities organized by Enable. It's done in collaboration with their implementing partners such as Window International, Welthunger and Educans. We promote inclusion, inclusion of especially the refugees into the market systems that are already existing. We don't want them to be in isolation, we want them to be included in the market system. We have been training for four months 
and then they take us for the intensive for three months. After coming back, they give us the startup kids. We have started doing our business as a group. We are now working in the group. As you have seen today, we have cooked food. We brought here a lot of things. And by then I could not support myself financially. Now I can do it. I got uh, skills for doing this one. Now I'm, I'm happy because every time I'm seeing money. Now I'm saving some money and I'm helping my children. I was doing nothing. So through the, the training that uh, I underwent, I think I realized that I was able to at least do some of the things that can make for me money and I earn a living. With the Enable now, you have a chance to now get a hands-on skills. You get a trade, you train, and you are able to start a living. And for refugees, livelihood is one of the important things. These benefits don't exclude youths with disabilities. The daily I get that 50,000. And that money, that 15,000, I balance it. Sometimes I save 5,000, that 10,000 I put it just for something different. These success stories by the beneficiaries of the support to Skilling Uganda project through Enable is an indicator of their social and economic transformation. This is completely in line with the government programs of, uh, of creating jobs, creating opportunities for the youth and also uh, making youth a little bit active. I would like to appreciate Enable because the, while the learners were taken through the training process, at the end of the training when we awarded them the certificates, Enable also provided them with the startup kits. This was a very big leap forward. Learners can build from there and they can live sustainably because they'll have moved from self-reliance now into resilience.